Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. What do you make of that? <laughs> well, I'll give you a clue. On one end, we got the uh, FBI interface device. <laughs> you can't say that. It's okay. Nobody knows what that means except for you and I. But the 300 pound gorilla on this end goes here and then uh, we got some hoses coming out the other end. What do you figure this is? That's right. It's a steering module off a big piece of hydraulic equipment. Uh, what articulates in the middle. Now, loaders and so forth used to have steering wheels and now they just got the joystick because it's far easier to move your wrist just a, a little wee bit rather than cranking this, especially with the suicide knob and so forth. But this is the old school style, what has a, a steering wheel. We don't get to see this very often. Made in Bulgaria, MS Hydraulic. Yeah, I started out, I looked this up, started out in 67 making widgets, and in 1997, fully privatized making hydraulic stuff, and then uh, 2000s or so listed on Sofia, the, the Bulgarian Stock Exchange. I like to look at these companies because it's interesting for the industrial Lego type stuff. If you if you start if you sort of get an overview of the share price, you can you can sort of see where the overall economy is going. Because when uh, when people are working and shit is happening, these guys these guys what make uh, implements and all sorts of industrial Lego they do quite well. They make a, a fair profit, so it's interesting to me. And they are doing what appears to be quite well, a booming business. Despite what the cool kids might tell you, don't let anybody tell you otherwise, work is a good thing. I know next, I absolutely fuck all about this. So, we refer to the hive mind. We got ourselves a little schematic here. One, two, three, four, five ports. We got pressure in port with a check valve. We got the tank port that goes back, that's zero pressure. We got left and right steering cylinders for going widthwise. And we got LS. What is LS? Well, this, because it has LS, which is load sense, yeah, I'm not going to write it down. This has to be a closed center valve because if it was an open center valve, it wouldn't have the load sense. And uh, how to explain that? Okay, so closed center valves, there's two types of valves in hydraulics there's open center, and they work with gear pumps. Gear pumps, of course, positive displacement, they're always putting through a certain amount of, of flow. And if you stop up that flow, pressure goes through the roof, goes over the relief valve, heats up. So you need a valve that is open center so that the flow from the pump over here can just go straight through the valve when it's in the center position, straight through the valve, back to the tank. It doesn't build up any pressure, doesn't build up any heat. Now, this load sense with the closed center, that means that there is a variable displacement pump, probably a piston pump. So what happens is once it comes, once the pump uh, comes up to a predetermined pressure, say 2000 PSI, it de-strokes. So instead of continually pumping, all it's doing is pumping a little bit to make up for all the leakage in the system. And then what happens is, so there's 2000 PSI working here, but the pump isn't working. The pump isn't actually flowing anything. It's just flowing enough to maintain that pressure. Then, when we move this valve over, the load sense sends a signal, a hydraulic signal, to the pump to say, hey, we need that swash plate over, we need more pressure. So that's what's going on with this valve. A little bit complicated. I will get in, I'm gonna do a, a four part or five part or whatever. We're gonna build some hydraulic implements, but just so you know sort of the, the lingo. You don't have to know what it does, but just know that there's load sense, open center, closed center. We'll get into it. Taking step by each, I know it looks complicated because it is, but you break it down into tiny, tiny bit sized pieces, what you can comprehend, and you don't have to understand the whole thing. It's you, you, you minimize or you, um, there's a word for that. There's a word for that. Where the fuck is Lisa Simpson when you need her? So pressure coming in. There's a check ball here. So pressure can come in, can't come out, but there's also a spring of a thing. So pressure has to be of a certain value in order to over overcome that, unseats that uh, check valve, goes up here, gets blocked off by this check valve, goes to the spool body, three position, multiple way, lots and lots of ways. So 
this is actually a spool valve or it could be a rotary valve that's going to move back and forth and open up ports close up ports so that's that that's deadheaded in the neutral position so recall in the neutral position this is closed center so any any flow from the pump just gets deadheaded now this is interesting we have a pump internal in here you can see and it's a hydraulic pump because these are blackened and not not clear if they were clear triangles it's actually a pump and a motor um, and it's actuated how is it actuated there's no motor here there's no engine it's actuated on the steering wheel so this is actually a manual pump a manual hydraulic pump so two, 300 pound gorilla uh, 300 pound wing nut just a given or while on the steering wheel what does that do that turns the pump and pumps fluid into this valve but it's deadheaded however we can see there's manual connection to the actual valves here and there's a spring detent to bring it to neutral on this guy and there's a spring detent to bring the valve to neutral as well so when we turn the steering wheel this valve goes over that way and we get flow into either either what is going on here I gotta look at this I can't explain it until I understand it myself I think I got the gist of it, not to worry. If I make a mistake, I'll hear about it. <laughs> so pressure comes in, we actuate the valve here, and pressure goes either to the left side cylinder and exhausts the right hand cylinder. So this shuttles over, we can see the, the pressure gets um, brought over to the left, or if we shuttle over that way, the pressure gets brought over to the right, and the left hand cylinder exhausts to tank. Then if we go over pressure, say we hit a bump or something, we go over pressure instead of relying on the system relief valve what will happen is any pressure spikes will come through here and exhaust directly th to tank through this valve instead of going all the way back to the pressure now the load sense is interesting we maintain pressure in the load sense um, because of course the, the this this pump pressure is going to be higher until we put some demand on it and then there's going to be some slight pressure drop here the load sense is going to pick that up the load sense line is actually going to sense drop in pressure and it's going to uh, call for for more pump flow so that that swash plate will kick over give you more pump flow and then you go ahead and move all your stuff there'll be some priority valves all sorts of stuff uh, to make sure that the steering and the brakes get pressure before everything else. Of course, steering and brakes are critical. So this is just one little component. One, well, this is the interesting part. You look at this and you look at ICs, uh, integrated circuits. This is a logic element in a mechanical computer, in a hydraulic computer. And instead of outputting ones and zeros on a screen or a little printout on a page, what it's doing is outputting movement in a machine. It's fucking, it, it all comes for a full circle. This is a hydraulic calculator. Now a word on these relief valves, there's three of them in here. These are pilot operated. We can see there's a pilot line. And then if pressure comes in here, if the pressure overcomes the spring force, then this kicks over and allows high pressure to go directly to tank. Same thing on the other side. The same thing with the load sense. This, this maintains the pressure of the load sense. If it gets over pressure, either from, well, from the load sense itself here, this, so this is, this is all pilot line up to here, and then comes down exhaust to tank. If that if that tank pressure gets too high, why would it, why would it do that? Why would it do that? Load sense. I gotta think about this now. Okay, there's an orifice here. Uh, I was looking at it backwards. So load sense pressure comes in here. If it overpressures, this shuttles the valve over, drops to tank, drops off any pressure. So it is a relief valve, but there is a, a pilot line going to the tank. So if there's pressure in the tank line that assists the spring tension and means that we need more pressure to get this to, to go over so this is maintaining a pressure differential 
That's that this little pilot line allows us to maintain a pressure differential. So if there's a lot of flow to tank, of course, the more flow, the more ref the more the more fluid flowing in a conductor, the more resistance there is to that flow, the conductor being a pipe or a hose or whatever. So we want to maintain the differential pressure in this load sense. And that is why this pilot line has that guy in here. So not getting too, too deep into it. That's essentially how it works. Mechanically, you shuttle over the valve and mechanically you put some pressure in uh, to some of these sense lines in, in each block here. But overall, all you're doing is shuttling this valve over and the pump is doing all the work to get the cylinders to chooch back and forth. So here's the valve itself. And I think this was uh, aftermarket or, or manufactured. This, yeah, this is pretty crappy. Big long shaft here. Only the one bearing at the top. Weeble wobbling all over the place. Not the greatest. And we do have some Nord locks, locking washers. And we will test that, of course, in the torch struck domatic at some point, but not today. And then just a spline shaft that actually is the valve, the, the pump and the valve. So how we get this apart this is interesting here. Some paint on here, or just to, to, to say it's been torqued, but not on this guy. Uh, we're getting a wee wee for the good stuff now. Release the schmoo. <laughs> She's got some stank to her. That is some fine, fine Bulgarian hydrocarbon based hydraulic oil. Let's make sure we get that right. That's got to go that way. Okay, yeah, pumping element. Very, very cool. Look at this. Well, well, if I can get over, get it in, I'll show you what's going on. So here's the pumping element. This is cute. Beautifully machined. Uh, it looks to be EDM'd and then lapped on the, on the front and back side. Look at that surface finish there. Those striations this way. That has been EDM'd, but it is very, very tight fitting. And we can see here, just barely comes over the lobe. And what's going on here is as you're turning the steering wheel, well, this is entirely flooded, so there's oil in here, and then the volume gets reduced. That means oil has to flow out. It's positive. It has to. It has to flow out. Now the pressure will increase because pressure is restriction to flow. Uh, is the result of restriction to flow. So if if you don't have any restriction to flow, you're not going to have any pressure. Pumps positive pumps only create flow. They don't create pressure. Pressure is a byproduct of having restriction to that flow. Now this is interesting because essentially this pump is doing absolutely fuck all. <laughs> it is there so that the 300 pound gorilla on the steering wheel feels like he's doing something. All it's doing mechanically, this valve gets shuttled over, so it's not doing that. All it's doing, it's going through this little restrictor plate right back to tank. That's all it's doing. <laughs> this, this whole mechanism is just so the guy feels like he's actually turning the wheel. This lobed gear, uh, it, interestingly, this will come up in uh, Sumitomo Cyclo uh, gear, a gear reduction box. We'll, we'll get into that. I, hopefully guys able to send me one because they're fucking cool. But look at what's happening here. We got six, one, two, yeah, six lobes and seven counter lobes female lobes, what would you call that? Dedendums. So the thing has to rotate around. If it had the same six, nothing would happen. So there's a pretty deep gear reduction in that. Now, because this is, you see that, that circle doesn't stay in the center. That means when we're driving this, this has to eccentric off. It has to cam off. So if we look at that, it's real thin and it's also rounded on the gear teeth. There, like that, yeah. And the drive is just a, a dog, just a straight shaft dog, uh, what would you call that, drag link. And that's This of course came out of the, the valve body and that drives right in through. And that's just haptic feedback for the driver. Taking that A part, I'm, whoa, 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 I don't wanna lose that. I see now why they've made, uh, they put this, that's actually just paint uh, witness for anti-tamper 
because these are plugs, not fast. They appear to be plugs, not fasteners. And these guys weren't in there tight at all, so they needed they needed that goo in there in order to make sure they didn't move. I'm not quite sure how this comes apart, but one step at a time. Okay, so that's not a plug. That is a preload for some sort of spring thing. Pretty heavy die spring on there. Again, with the ball, proper ball seat. So something interesting is going on in there. I took this plug out. It was either preloaded with gas or spring. I gotta go looking for a spring and sprung and something flew out and then sealed in with a copper washer, copper crush washer. Copper, nice annealed, soft copper washer and uh, crushes down nice, keeps the schmoo in. This is some sort of adjustment. Yeah, there we go. Preload spring on some sort of valve. We're getting into the meat of her here, but still there's a ball seat there. Let's see if it comes over. Okay, next. I tried turning this, but it just turns this whole thing. It doesn't unthread. So I think what we got to do is take this circlip off. Now, gird your loins and watch your eyes. She's, uh, the Jesus clip is about to make an appearance. Boing! Not so fucking tough now, are you? <laughs> you old tippy tip tip. Tippy tip tip. Why you not come? Now what the fuck is wrong? Okay, well. Oh! Ho ho ho! Wily Bulgarian buggers. How the fuck over? Oh, very cool. Very cool. There's these are spring elements so that the the steering wheel's got a bit of give there. So it's not yeah, 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 yeah. It's got some shock absorption. Kidda. Look at that high techery. Oh fuck me. Somebody call Elon Musky. We got some rocket surgery happening here. Ah! Have a look at that one. Beautiful piece of engineering. That is so tight fitting in this. This is this would be ductile iron. So lots of nodular carbon uh, crystal. Well, whatever. Little little nerds of, of carbon in there. Uh, and then of course it's all oil lubricated oil bath the whole way around but all that's going on here is we're just as we're turning this we are opening and closing different ports and what the fuck okay and this is holding the whole works together so beautiful machining on this have a look you are looking at a hydraulic computer and screenshot now we have a real closed gander at this does it look anything like this at all? No. So how do you go about troubleshooting something like this? Oh my dear Lord. Well, luckily now, we have a very powerful tool. <laughs> Sorry, something about the word tool just makes me giggle. And instead of pulling out, the first thing you do, instead of pulling out the pressure gauges and whatnot, looking for leaks and so forth, looking for uh, tearing the valve apart, what you can do, get out your old IR scope. And if there is a component that is much hotter than the other stuff in the system, that is the first place you look. It is dummy hydraulic troubleshooting 101. Get yourself one of these. You got a hydraulic problem, you look for the heat. You find the heat of the meat, you will get yourself to the angle of the dangle. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.